What's on the bench today? Uh, I don't know. Been doing hay pretty much non-stop for a while. So, kind of lost momentum on saws. Going back and forth between full-time job and running the farm and doing the saw hobby, you know. Kind of uh, have to transition from one to the other rather quickly. As I get older, it gets tougher to do. But this is a 550, and it has a toasted top end. I kind of looked inside. And interestingly enough, it's a little bit of a story because um, I've got this as a swap because, like I said, I'm a hobby, and I have latitude to do things like this. But basically what happened was I built the 254, and I guess that ran quite well. And young fellow took a liking to one of those, uh, gave me two carcasses to build in return for this blown up 550 XP, which of course may not make any sense whatsoever to any sane human being except for a guy like me. Um, because I wanted to get into a 550, the uh, potential loss of uh, economic value or whatever you want to call it uh, doesn't really matter because this is a hobby. Um, the first thing I'm seeing on this saw is as a few of my members or my subscribers had already told me these things are just really small 562's and it seems to be laid out pretty much the same and I guess I'm going to assume it's going to have the same kinds of uh, challenges. Um, so that's what's on the bench after I get done with what I need to do today. And what I'm going to do today is uh, take this original version 562 that I had done a no base gas to build on early on. This was actually the this was actually the first saw that I ever uh, started exploring that with, and. I want to tear it apart. You know, I want to see whether or not it has that same issue um, that I've seen on so many others where the uh, cylinder actually interferes with the, uh, with the case. And if the answer is yes, it does, I'm going to set it up on the lathe and, and trim it back and put it back together. If the answer is it doesn't have that problem, well, I'm still going to chuck it up in the lathe and trim that base because from what I've measured on the last few of these saws, even if it's not directly interfering um, cold, I don't know if I'm just being, uh, I don't know if I'm just being, you know, a little bit too cautious or there's a whole bunch of words you can use for that. Some of them very ni nice and some of them not so nice. Um, probably going to do a couple of changes to it anyway because you know I've learned quite a bit since I started this this project series last year. Now I put the videos out but I usually spend a little time on the saws before I throw them up on video. I think the other point I want to make is that this here is a five screw case saw and it's working fine. So I think what I'm going to do for the video is about as close to a uh, how-to video as you're going to get out of my channel. And there are a variety of reasons why I don't uh, get into those nut by nut, bolt by bolt, part by part type discussions. One, uh, simply because I find them boring. You might not find them boring, but I do. So I don't want to do them. Well, back again, I was freaking out. Uh, couldn't find my darn tools. And what you 
you gotta have is you have to have a five millimeter T handle, four millimeter T handle, something along these lines to, manip to manipulate uh, the rubber lines. Obviously, to pull the bar and chain off, put things back together, some cleanup. Trying to organize the old fart. Put a little tray at the end of the table that had those those tools in them, and I didn't know it. I'm like, where in heck name do those tools go? I was beginning to freak out because I was dead in the water without those tools. So anyway, I go along these lines. You know, people can take different approaches in terms of what they do, but I start off by taking off the handle. You know. You want to use power, go ahead and use power. That's faster. Um, today, I'm not in that much of a hurry, I guess. I've got to clean things up. And I think this is going to be modus operandi pretty much on any 562 that I, that I do anything to. And that is if I drop that cylinder, I think I'd mentioned this in my last video, um, got to trim the flange just have to do it. This one here has a base gasket delete. It doesn't show any signs of, of air leak. You know, it runs pretty good. Um, but this is more of a due diligence thing for me. I don't think this has really ever been run hard to heat up enough to, um, to create the situation that I anticipate to happen. But I'm going back through and all the saws that I did base gasket deletes and doing that trim to the to the the cylinder you know all the hobby saws and also well, this one here was one that I didn't do a uh, a piped muffler mod I did a uh, um, basically I opened up the the outlet a little bit and see that creates a whole set of issues too is when I put in that little tube Unless I put a, a screen in there, which I do on some, you can't use those in state forest. At least here in New York State, you can't. Because you have to have a spark arrester. And I would say, based on my experience living out west in Colorado, um, I would never recommend using a saw that has an open exhaust without a spark arrester after around June in uh, the national forests up there because forest fires are fairly common out there and why would anyone even think about doing something that might uh, make that happen a little quicker so this particular saw is one I've modified and the intent is to keep this one um, state forest legal, yet still get some of the torque increases and enhancements that you get from, you know, a little more compression. Uh, I gotta get the air out and blow some things off because you have to take this cover off here, and there's a little cover in there. So you have to add these two tools to the mix. It's in there somewhere, I'm sure. But in order to take the uh, chain break off, you first got to pull this little piece of plastic here. And what this plastic does is it adds a little bit of strength to holding on this deflector plate there. And you have to take the plate off. And these are held on with self-tapping coarse threaded screws, you know, details. Once that comes off, then you can pull the chain brake handle off of here. And the other thing is a detail, these bushings, they go in 
with the uh, flange side to the inside, not to the outside. They go in like that. Okay. That's a detail which some people forget, but. And the other thing that I do is just so I won't lose things is I pull this this uh, spring detent right out of there because it will come out usually at the worst opportune moment and then what I'll do next is I'll blow this off with with compressed air and then uh, take the muffler off and then take the carburetor off then take the cylinder off pretty much in that order so let me go do some air work A little bit of compressed air, and this is five millimeter. There's your muffler. You know, I'm I'm debating because I've opened up this side. I wonder if I want to open up that just a little bit because that makes a huge difference on my other saws. I think I will. That's a little later. Now I have this. Uh, deflector here basically glued on with 1184 so should anyone wonder yeah it had to be snapped off it did not come off easy take a quick look inside everything looks nice in there it's nice to see that you know nice clean looking piston and all that stuff um, here's another point one of the issues that was uh, commonly associated with the the five screw cases was right in here they would leak bar oil now here's a six screw case and if you want to know what you have before you actually tear things apart if you look really carefully you'll see right there there's a raised area and that's where they cast in the boss for the screw that squeezes this point right here this one does not have it you can see it right there. So this is an, a, a five screw case. And I guess the point I want to make is uh, this is a saw that I had put in a set of bearings. And look, there's no leaking there because I put the cases together with both the standard gasket, but a little bit of 1184 as well. And so to those people who, you know, don't have the money to upgrade to the six screw cases, but have to make their their saw run obviously you can okay don't feel like you have to go up to the six screw cases even though I highly recommend it okay after I've got you know the handles and the muffler off a little detail is take the spark plug in and, and unhook it from there because it's something you forget and then start yanking on you know when you get to the end of the game um, taking off the carburetor, two screws, I just, it's all rubber mount, so I just push it off to the side and spin it out with a, you know, the four millimeter. Once you get used to the little twists and turns on the saw, it really isn't that bad a saw to work on. You know, my initial reaction to these is I hated them because, you know, all these complex parts on the ignition system. I'm sorry, on the intake system. And yeah, it's there, but you know something? More often than not, you don't have to pull that whole ignition system off to do the things that I do. Um, now, I believe this one here has an EL48. So it has that little hitch and get along when you first touch the throttle. That's not an air leak, it's just what they do. I don't know why, it's just what they do. But while you are doing this, the next thing you need to do, pull the, the throttle cable off, and like that. Now there's a fuel line down in there, and I, I popped this, this one line right here. It's one of the return lines. Actually, I probably ought to dump the gas out. So I dumped the gas out of it, and you know, you always have these debates online about what to use. Um, I use 32 to 1 with the Husqvarna XP Synthetic and they've had great luck. 
and I suspect that when we pull this saw down, you're going to see yet again the kind of evidence that I see that that uh, tells me why I do this. <laughs> you know, you get guys who argue for all kinds of crazy numbers like 100 to 1, and I heard one guy online start espousing 400 to 1. And uh, I'm sorry, that's, in my mind, is, is foolish. But, you know, what do I know? When you pull the carburetor out, you got to pull it away from the fuel line. It's going to pump out. See, it was under pressure. That's good news. The reason why that's good news is it means that there's no uh, degradation of those fuel lines. I've pretty much found these to be in good shape, you know. I really haven't seen any degradation issues, even on the older ones. The other thing you got to do is, is pop the fuel line out of that little bracket right there. At some point, I got to get the uh, throttle cable out of there, too. Well, I'm going to pull the cylinder up a little bit before I get to it. So now, basically, the only thing that's holding that cylinder on the saw is the four cylinder bolts. And I still have the uh, throttle cable stuck in there. Let me get these tools out of the way because I don't need them right now. Let me crack these cylinder bolts. Oh boy, somebody put them on tape. Bam. Wonder who that was. That was good. Snap. There we go. So that's cylinder bolts. Now the exercise again here is to see what happens and see whether or not this uh, cylinder flange hit the, hit the cases and created a leaking situation uh, on this saw. And what I think I'm going to find is the cylinder did in fact hit the cases, but it didn't leak because of the three bond, which is a superior product. That's what I think I'm going to find. Wow. I'll tell you what. Here again, anyone questions the three bond product, I can hardly move this cylinder. It will not. There it comes. Come on. There it goes. So, pull the throttle cable off. Pull this out. Well, there's that nice film that I'm talking about. I'm not really seeing leak signs. And that cylinder was a bitch to get off, which means it was, it was glued on. Yeah. I think it was interfering right there. I see a shiny spot right there. Now what probably happens is when you push down on it, it probably flexes that damn thing in just a little bit, which isn't good. So yeah, this one here, yeah, you can see in the back where it actually interfered. Boy, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a shiny area right there in the back that corresponds to the shiny area here. So this one here, in fact, was interfering. Um, 1184 allowed it to seal anyway. That's amazing. But this is why I do teardowns. This is why I check, you know, build concepts. Is as I get through them and understand them, when I learn, I go back to the earlier ones and see whether or not the things I learned retroed back to those saws. In this case, it does. Um, and this one here probably would have run for a long time because it wasn't displaying any, any signs. Um, so this is as much for completeness on my part as anything else. Now, while I'm in this saw, is there anything else that I could do to make it run better? Uh, two things. Two things. One is, for whatever reason, on this older cylinder, 
Um, it was harder to get these uh, these bushings out of there. Um, but if you're going to set this thing on a lathe, you got to get that stuff out of there because it's going to come out at the worst time and you might get it stuck right in your eye. So make sure you get those out. And the second thing is, in order to do the modification on the flange, I do have to pull this whole intake off. And that also comes off with four screws with a four millimeter. And there's this uh, kind of a rubber o-ring arrangement inside there. That actually does a fairly good job of sealing. I don't know whether or not I'm going to go to the extra step of adding uh, 1194. I haven't decided. Probably not. I haven't had any problem with these at all that I know of. Now you got to remember on these when you pull this off, that goes into that rubber grommet. You know, and that's the color you want to see on the plug. Look at that. Chocolate brown. So this saw actually was running fine. Even though that flange appears to have, have interfered, I think uh, it's a testament to this particular product here that it was able to seal up and run. But either way, I'm going to trim it. Um, put it back together. The other thing is, this is one that I had uh, sealed up the caps. I've been doing that too, or using 1184 on these. I've been using 1184 on these transfer caps on all the 562s I pull apart. But all right, off to the lathe. Now this is truly a slip fit. Okay. There it goes. Set that in there. Cinch it up tight. A little bit of pressure. Here, let me do this first. Just a little bit of pressure and then lock it. And it's got enough traction. And I already had the cooling set up. And I have the center set with this uh, lock nut deal. So all I have to do is slide that down, lock it, it's done. Now, what that does is it gives me the ability of getting in here. And you always check this, you know. Never, never not check this and make sure that when you are very close to the end of your cut, you actually don't have anything that's going to turn around and smack and create a collision. So I'm going to bring it out so it clears the flange just a little bit. So now the tool clears the flange and I'm going to set my, uh, my indicator on a solid point. It really doesn't matter where. And then once it's zeroed, then I can move this back till I get to 30 thousandths. 10, 12, 21, 30 thousandths. And once I'm there, you know, I'm going to go 40 thousandths. Okay. Once I've got to the 40 thousandths, I don't know if you can see the, the number. Let me just set this. Then what I'm going to do is uh, cinch up on the, the lock on the cross slide. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Take off, shut this thing off now, I don't need it. And uh, take this thing off the lathe because I don't need it there either. And now that I've got it there, I'll do one more check to make sure that everything is clear. And I'm not going to be in a line of sight. I just I'm going to do it by hand. That's it. Forty thousandths. And uh, when I pulled that base gasket out, it dropped that cylinder thirty. So I'm adding ten thousandths to what was their stock. Well, 
we got to break that inside edge. And I'll do that with a die grinder. I'm in pro close proximity to my saw. Um, I put a rag over things so there's no chance of any dust getting in there. Now I gotta pretty thoroughly clean that whole cylinder. And the next question is, do I raise that right there? I'm, I'm inclined to, you know. So I took it down about 100 thousandths from where it was. So that's really 40 thousandths more than stock relative to the base of the cylinder, you know. Which is uh, something but not, you know, it's not at earth shattering. Take that edge. Yeah. We'll see what that does. This is a test case. You know, but this saw doesn't matter. So, so basically, this one has trimmed flange, no base gasket, but I'm not trimming the base. Sealed up transfer ports, dropping that section of the of the flange where the transfers are. Um, it has the intake duration. Uh, I added an additional two degrees. On the piston, not the not the cylinder, and uh, we'll see what that does. The second thing I'm going to do on this saw here is I'm going to open up that hole significantly to bypass the baffle, like I've done on my other mods. See if that matters. So to summarize, as I open up that on the inside fairly significantly, um, I trimmed. The flange and I lowered or raised I guess depending on whether you have it right side up or upside down I raised that area of the transfer uh, the entry to the transfer ports up by about a hundred thousands well I've never found an easy way of getting rid of the goo gasket off these things um, but I don't know if you guys remember I was speculating that there was about a ten thousands interference This is the goo gasket that I peeled up off the case, okay? So this is going to give me an idea on how much gap that it had to, had to, uh, to seal. And it was roughly 10 thousandths, which tells me two things. One, I was right that I had a 10 thousandths interference um, of that flange hitting the case. But also what it tells me is this crap right here or this gasket right here was able to span that ten thousandths area and seal well I think I'm at the point of diminishing returns where I kind of scratched as much as I could off and then I used uh, you know just simply brake clean and a rag to try to get the rest off and there's most of it off and uh, but basically this saw looks fine you know, and the other thing that this saw has is that crank where one half I left it alone, on the other half I glued the uh, crank stuffers on with the 1184, and guess what? The side I glued it on is still tight, the side that I didn't got a little bit of slop. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter even a little bit. But. I just find it interesting. You know, there's one more thing I'm going to do to this saw. Is I'm going to do the removal of this material right here. How's that? So that's quite a bit opened up. It'll let quite a bit more air out that side. So I think it's time to put this darn thing together. Four things I changed on this saw. Um, muffler. Trim the flange, trim that back, and trimmed the clutch side of the uh, top. All right, time to go back together. <laughs>